Hello, it's Mr. Spracklin here. Welcome to the Inspire to Learn Virtual School Video Archive. This is where we keep all the footage from Virtual School from the last few months. And from Monday the 25th of May through to Wednesday the 3rd of June, we're going to be replaying you some of our favourite whole school assemblies. And today, we've got a real treat for you. Good morning everyone and welcome to our whole school assembly. That's right, it's 20 past 11 again and today it's Tuesday the 5th of May 2020. It's great to be back and uh, lovely to see who's watching this morning. If you're there, do make sure you say hello in the comments box. It's always nice to know who's watching. Uh, the Scott family are here and they say hello to everyone. Uh, thank you, Scott family, for joining us this morning. I hope you're having a great morning in virtual school. Um, it's wonderful to see all the work that everyone's been doing across the school. Lots of power mass happening this morning and uh, some people taking on Mrs. Johnson's special grammar challenge. If you've had a go at Mrs. Johnson's grammar challenge this morning, do let us know. Uh, hello from Isaac and Miss Brown. Isaac says, good song choice. Thank you very much, Isaac. It's always a nice song to start assembly with. Uh, hi from the Bakers who are tuning in this morning. Hello, Baker family. Thank you very much for joining us live on Facebook and YouTube this morning. Hello from Imogen, who's watching. Always great to see you watching, Imogen, and thank you for joining us. Hello from Harlan and from Hugo, who are watching this morning. Uh, welcome back to uh, Whole School Assembly from Virtual School. And hello from Lily. Thank you very much, Lily, for tuning in today. Always great to see who's watching. Um, please do keep your comments through as we, as we welcome our mystery guests this morning. Hello, Mr. Sprackman from Ursula and Orson, who are joining us this morning. Uh, thank you, Ur Ursula and Orson. Great to see you. Now, we've got a very special mystery guest this morning. I'm going to say a big hello to them. I'm going to say a big hello to Steve. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Mr. Sprackman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm very good, thank you. Sitting, enjoying yeah. my... A nice seat in my living room in Fordington. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, some of the children may recognise you because you've been into school before, haven't you, Steve? Many times. Yeah. Yes, but I used to have much shorter hair then because I haven't been able to get it cut for a good two months. So, yes. <laughs> I had a lot of change. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, Steve, would you like to tell everyone who you are and uh, yep. what job you do? Yep. My, name, I'm a, my job title is Senior Archaeologist, as I think I've told you before. Um, so I work for Dorset Council uh, doing things to do with archaeology, which is studying the past, the human past through stuff, through things that people have left behind and so forth and looking after places. But what I've also do and done in my own time is used old pictures to um, produce books. Ah. Um, so, um, so, so that people can compare all the new pictures of places to see how they've changed, which is what I'd like to speak to you about today, please. Oh, that sounds absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much, Steve. We'd love to see that. And I think you've entitled your assembly today, Dorchester, Old and New. And I've got some slides up on the screen here. Excellent. 
Yeah, and I'm just going to hold this up to the screen. I hope you can see them if I put them nice and close. There we go. And you see those. Those are the sort of things that you don't see much today. But when I was a kid, everyone sent them on their holidays, their postcards. Uh, and the idea was that you could um, have a nice picture of a place where you were and you could send something off to your relatives or friends or whatever. And on the back, send their address. That's an empty one um, and a message. And that's one the way they were sent. So there, there are lots of historical information and they started coming in oh, about 1900 when uh, people got good at photography and could take lots of pictures quite easily. And when you were actually allowed to send these things before that, you had to send them in letters. But then the idea came in of why not we just have these little bits of card that can go in the post and we can send messages to each other. And they were almost like the text messages of today. You could quickly write a little message to your mates. Uh, and the post was very quick in those days. So you could say, do you want to come around for tea tomorrow? Send it to your friend somewhere else in the town and you might get a response saying, yeah, I'll be there all within about 24 hours. So can we perhaps have a look at the first one, please, Mrs. Franklin? Hello? Yeah, definitely. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. You see that that's the back of one of these ones that's been filled in a bit like this one that I'm holding up. Um, and it tells us all sorts of information. It tells us who they were sending it to. Um, I'm pointing. That's a silly thing to do because you can't see where I'm pointing. If you look on the right-hand side, there's the address of the person somewhere near Sherborne it was being sent to. And if you look on the top right-hand corner, there's a stamp like we still use today. But there's also a postmark over it which tells you the date. And that's March 1810. So that was March 18th, 1910 that that message was sent. Um, and you might want to read later of the message on the other side. It's just a fairly ordinary thing, really. It's someone wishing a friend a happy birthday and saying they might come and visit them and then showing off about all the nice places they've been to. Uh, and the next one, please. But this is a nice way I've compared the two of these. I hope you can see that because you can go back and find the location where a picture was taken I take a photograph like I did. In this case, I took the picture about 10 years ago. So my picture's a bit out of date, but you can get a good idea of how things have changed. The picture on the upper top left uh, was taken about 1900, looking along High West Street in Dorchester. Uh, and I took my picture uh, oh, a few years ago now, but you can see all sorts of differences. You can see that some of the buildings are still the same. Like on the left, Judge Jeffrey's restaurant is up in both pictures. But look at what the people are doing on the old picture. They're running down the street. Now, you wouldn't do that now because you get knocked over. Um, but, um, and in fact, if I want, when I wanted to get a picture that didn't have too many cars in, I had to go on a Sunday morning to take that picture. Uh, but you can generally get the, the same idea. And it also shows how good photography was because some of the early photographs, people had to sit really still um, for a long time before a picture could be taken. But that one taken about 1900 is quite similar to a modern picture. It's a snapshot. It just shows a moment. There's, you look at closely and you see that people are clearly moving. They're running up and down. And yet they still managed to get a really good photo. And the next one, please. And I like this picture because it tells you all sorts of things about how photographers worked. First of all, can you see there's someone? Well, let me tell you where it is. It's St. Peter's Church in Dorchester, quite close by where that other picture was taken. Uh, and the building on the left is Dorset County Museum. But yeah, can you see there's a person standing there in the road? You might be able to make out that it's an old fashioned uniform, but that's a policeman. And I think that's how some of these photographers work. They had to have the help of the local police. So what they've done is they've got some people to pose, to stand with their little stalls just in front of St. Peter's Church. And they've got the help of the police to keep everyone else out of the way and keep the traffic back. And sometimes when you see some of these pictures close up, you see that the, the policeman is really close in, smiling away because he's really chuffed and enjoying himself. But they needed to sort of do a bit of teamwork on that. It's a moment of fame for the policeman, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And these were quite photographs like that were quite an event, you know. And you you knew that then the postcard would be published once soon afterwards, and you could send a postcard with yourself in it. 
So yeah, a good bit of sales work as well by the photographer. But if you go and stand at this spot and try and work, look back, find it again, you can't go much further back um, than the photographer was because there's other buildings away in, in South Street. So when I went along with my camera, and I'll show you in a minute, I couldn't even get this wider view along. Look at that. That's as much as I could get. Look at compare the two. So in a way, the, the photographer took this about 1910. So 110 years ago, had a better camera than me because he maybe had to set it up for longer, but he could get much more of the view. He could get the whole church for a start into that picture. And I wonder if anyone else can notice anything different between this picture and this picture. Is there any additions perhaps from this picture? Yeah. This picture. I can spot one thing that's... Yeah, I can a couple. Shall we yeah. start, hang on and see who turns up with things. Interesting, the statues in both. Yeah, the statue of William Barnes, the Dorset dialect poet. Uh, while we do that, a couple of people, I've got a couple of questions here. Okay. Im Imogen's asking, how long have you been an archaeologist? Oh, gosh. Um, I went to university and studied archaeology at Leicester in the early 1980s. So uh, nearly 40 years, sort of. Fantastic. Probably longer than most of your teachers have been alive. Uh, Imogen says there's a sign on the side. So uh, that's right. In the first picture, there isn't the sign that says St. Mary's Church. That's right. Yeah, the red one. Yeah. Is there anything else that we notice that's different? I wonder. Ah, uh, there's lines in the road, says the Hoskins. That's in the, yep. second. That's, in the yeah, second. that's true. And there's no road markings in the first one. And there's traffic lights. Yeah. And that was the first thing that I noticed, the traffic lights. There's no need for traffic lights in the 90, in 1910 when the first one was taken. No. Some good spots there, Prince of Wales. Thank you. Shall we move on to the next one where you can actually compare two? Brilliant. There we go. Thanks for that. Now, lots to talk about this one. You might recognise... It's in the Borough Gardens in Dorchester. So sort of between your school and the town centre. Uh, and the caption on the at the top called, says the Hansford Clock. And that was put up in 1905. And I think this postcard was, put, was made and sent out very soon afterwards. But this tells us something about how people worked because they got a new technology and that was colour but they didn't always use it properly. They were too busy showing off that they could colour pictures in because you think old pictures are always in black and white from 100 years or so, ago or so, but actually what they could do is they could take a picture and then they could sort of add colour afterwards. And I think I see some of them, it's almost like they did it with crayon. Um, and then, the, But the person who was doing the colouring in afterwards might not have been the photographer or it might have been the, the, might have been the photographer, but they forgot what they saw or they couldn't quite be bothered so that clock as you see it in the modern picture on the right i'm pretty sure has always had that color scheme on it it's always had that the reds and the greens and the and the golds yellows and whatever on it um but when they did the one on the right on the left rather the old one um either they forgot or they couldn't be bothered so they did it mostly in green and just put a few little bits in, in other colors um, but also when that old picture was taken, so about 1905, so just over 110 years ago, Borough Gardens had only been open for 15 years and only been laid out about 1890. So the trees in the background in the old picture are much smaller because they'd not had very long to grow. And as you see in the modern picture, in my picture on the right, you can hardly see the houses. They're just sort of peeking through the trees because the trees have had a good 100 years to grow. A couple of people pointing out the trees in this yeah. picture, thinking about the time and the colour and the size of the trees in that space. Comments about the sky as well. Yeah. Um, Imogen says the clock is magnificent. Nice one, Imogen. And um, we had a question about the old photo, uh, the previous photo as well. There's a good. Yeah. Question. I'll just put that back up a second. This one. Um, Jessica once was wondering if the corn exchange would have been next to it at the time of the old photograph. 
Yes, because the corn exchange was built in the 1800s, so it was it was already there. It's just right. not in this picture. Fantastic. I'll go back to that one. And when when was the when was this clock uh, installed? Do we know? 1905, uh, and it was. Um, you might be able to see uh, in close up in my picture, especially you can just see the outline of a head, a face. That's the man Charles Hansford who paid for it. And if you go there today, you can still see um, uh, that that head, that uh, silhouette. So of that was um, after. Sorry, it's very similar to the Jubilee clock in Weymouth, isn't it? Which is older. Yeah, very similar. I, you can't help looking at the two and thinking that people from Dorchester went and saw the the Jubilee one and thought, "We'll have one of them." Yeah. I think that there's actually a a company that was making them quite standard. And in fact, someone showed me a picture of one of these in Portugal, which is very similar to this one. I think it's Portugal. And I, I, I so there was so obviously such a, a good design and people liked them so much, they may well have been sending them all over the world. Mm. And would the Borough Gardens have been open to everyone at that time when it was first opened? Do we know that or? Yeah, I mean, that it was a thing that was happening um, in Victorian times, the late 1800s. The towns were getting bigger and people were spending a lot of time working and it was much more difficult to get to the countryside uh, to go for a walk and get fresh air. So people who were in charge thought, well, we need to do something about this to make sure that more people can get at least get some exercise and enjoy a bit of greenery, see a bit of nature. So there was a real, uh, it became very much a fashion to start putting out, uh, to start putting out, so start building parks within the expanding towns and cities. So Borough Gardens in Dorchester was just one example. Um, they were they were springing up all over the place. Oh, fantastic. Should we go on? We'll go on to the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. This is also Borough Gardens, isn't it? Yep, exactly. I I, I think from, the, uh, from what's in the picture, things like the bandstand in the middle, which was also put up about 1905, uh, and other details and so forth, that this and the next picture were both taken um, sometime between about 1905 and 1910 from a very similar angle. So two different photographers had the same idea um, that that was a good spot to get a good view of the Boa Gardens. And they even had the idea of getting someone to pose in the picture in the same sort of way. In both of them, there is a lady in full Edwardian gear. That was the Edwardian time. Um, strolling along supposedly just happening to be there but i very much guess i very much think that the photographer got someone to do it deliberately you see the way that people are sort of nicely spaced out whereas in my case i just went along oh about 10 years ago now so even that's probably changed uh, and just found roughly the same spot and took a picture with the bandstand uh, but also with much more trees so in those two old pictures you can see the houses in the streets beyond just poking out on the tops whereas in mine you can't because the trees have grown some a lot more and i think you could probably go along now and compare that picture of mine which yeah i think that was 10 years ago um with what you see today and you'll probably see some changes certainly in the growth of the trees a lot more benches now <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah yeah. Well, yes, and I guess that was part of what the, they initially thought that parks were about exercise and walking more. You know, like we're doing now for with coronavirus. You you meant to be out. You meant to be out walking. Um, whereas I think as time went on in the past, people thought, well, actually, it's, it's nice to just sit and enjoy. And some people can't walk very far, so we'll put more benches in. Ah, oh, now where's this? Ah. Now, I'm going to check my notes on this, so I'm just going to lean over if anyone can see me. So this is in South Street in Dorchester, and the building on the left is still there. The one on the right isn't. The building on the left is quite famous. Um, it's called Napper's Mite. It's one of the lovely old historic buildings in Dorchester, uh, and it was built in 1615 by a chap called Rob Sir Robert Napper, who left his money behind so it can be built in his will, I think. And it was intended as an arms house where poor people who were uh, unable to look after themselves, older people, um, could could live a nice, comfortable life and grow some vegetables for their food and things in the back. So that's still there. Uh, and you look at but 
when you if you could perhaps show my my picture you can see there's that same napper's mite uh, with a few more bits of paraphernalia knocking around it but look to the the right of it in that picture and you'll see one or two very different buildings that's the hardy arcade in my picture and ghoul shop i think the ghoul shop was built in the 1980s and the hardy arcade in the late 1960s so about 50 years ago the building that use that was in the old picture on the right um, is the Dorchester Grammar School, which was, I'm going to give you that, I'm going to sneak over and check my dates, um, was built in 1879 and then was demolished in the 1960s when the Hardy Arcade was being built. And that's quite typical of quite a lot of Dorchester. It's got a lot of old historic buildings that survive and give the place a real character make it a really nice interesting place to look around but also in some cases people have thought oh the village well we don't need this anymore we really need something a bit more modern so 50 years ago what they thought was modern was the hardy arcade with lots of shops in it where people can buy all the things they need i wonder if any of the children can spot any other similarities between this photo and this photo of any other part of buildings apart from the nappers might is there another building that's the same in this uh, shape? and this shot i think i know what you mean so if you can see anything uh, maybe comment on there it's very interesting how some buildings survive and some don't even though they're next door to each other yeah absolutely yeah and at least dorchester is lucky in a lot of other places where uh, which were bombed heavily in the second world war where they didn't really have much choice the buildings were destroyed dorchester lost very little i think during the war while we see if anyone's got any answers to that question, I'm just going to go back to the clock because uh, our Deputy Mayor of Dorchester, David Taylor, is watching. Oh, hi. Says that he, we've just restored the clock and found it had 61 minutes on its face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. I will be using that uh, as if I've known it all along next time I do a presentation on, the, on this sort of thing. <laughs> well, Appreciate that. that little unknown facts for us <laughs> yeah, yeah. you do pick up some good stuff when you do these sort of talks all sorts of people come up with all sorts of great stuff i'm going back to this picture and this picture uh rose has spotted that um there's a church that's it yeah people oh, seen, to the church some people have seen other things uh jacob spotted there's a flag in in the in the second picture yeah. um, not in the first picture there's a few flags there i wonder if anyone can name the flags that they can see there's a lot of there's a lot of one particular flag here. Uh, there's what's there's one, two, three, four, five flags that are yellow with a white cross on. I wonder if anyone knows what that is. And there's another flag up here as well that you might be able to spot um, on there as well. So um, see if any of you can spot what that is. A few people have spotted the church. The church you can you can certainly see the church in both, can't you? Yeah, and I don't think that was very old when the uh, the old picture was taken. It's probably only, I don't know, 30, 40 years old at the time. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mrs. Oh, we've got a few people now seeing the Dorset flag. They spotted the Dorset flag. Look in that picture. There's quite a lot of Dorset flags there, isn't there? I wonder yeah. whether there was a special event going on when you took that photo. I, there must have been. To be honest, it's such a long time ago. It's about 10 years. I've forgotten. <laughs> so again, you could go and change have a look at that picture today and compare with you know compare that with what's there today and i think you'll see a few a few other changes as well oh there's an interesting comment here saying that the paving that was completed a few years ago in south street was designed to highlight the historic buildings by user by using higher quality materials the higher quality material is outside napa's might and outside the church morning emma yeah i know emma morning emma yeah. <laughs> lots of people spotting the dorset flag uh joel says the dorset flag too lots of people spotting that thank you very much should we move on let's have a look yeah. what we've got next ah where's this too i wonder it's quite hard to see with all the trees here yeah absolutely oh, that could almost be one for people to guess isn't it i mean that is a, a view that has really changed because those trees have gone um should we ask if anyone knows where that is yeah that would be really good We'll just uh, give you a moment. I, I will just say while we're waiting that um, lot, some, lot of the roads in Dorchester had trees planted outside them. Some of them around about 200 years ago, some less. Um, 
there used to be a story that a lot of them were put by French prisoners during the wars against Napoleon. That may not be true in all cases, but a lot of the roads that go out of the town of Dorchester, you can still see they've got trees along them. But this one has largely lost its trees because I think it was being widened. This picture, I think, was taken about 1895. So it's one of the very earliest ones we've got in this presentation. And about five years later, the road was being widened, um, I think. And that was probably why those trees were cut down. So before we, we see people's guesses for where this is, David Taylor's made a reference to the Dorset flag and said the white cross on the flag is our patron saint, Saint v Wita. We yeah. Wita, I think. Wita. Saint Wita. Um I and think... I wished a video Saint Wita. And we watched a video last week where David was talking about Saint Wita. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. From which um, we've got a few guesses here where the um Joel says, is it the keep? Um, the Wilson say it's the keep near the top of the town. Hazel, uh, the Hoskins say it's that is the keep. A few people saying the keep, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, Rosa says, uh, or the Dovels say the keep, but Rosa always calls it the castle. Yeah, well done, Rosa. Yeah, everyone's right. That's all from Jacob. That's right. A bit different looking now, though, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's have a look. Yep. There's still Brit same sort of angle. There's Bridport Road without the trees. And a lot more buildings along it as the town has grown up. And yeah, there's the keep, which is the was now it's a military museum, but it was the gatehouse to the military barracks built in the 1870s. And the person who said it looked like a castle is absolutely spot on right because it was obviously designed to look like the entrance to a castle to make it look like a nice military um, military what, place. So we do, do we know anything about the trees while they would have been taken down? Because they've all gone from there, haven't they? But, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's to do with road widening. I think if you compare the two and you look where the, the pavement is up to um, the left-hand side of the keep, you'll see that it is wider. Hmm. You see what I mean? So I'm pretty sure that it's just it was just, just road widening. But we've, I got, people... we've got some exceptions. There's areas like Queen's Avenue still got lots of trees down, hasn't it? Yeah, and Weymouth Avenue out from Dorchester has got them. Or yeah, as you go out, as you go out from from my end from Fordington, you go out past um, uh, over Grace Bridge. You know there are still some nice avenues of trees out of the town that way. Um, Lexi says my granny lives near there, and this is a museum and a keep from Lexi. Um, and the Hoskins say Prince Charles is a big supporter of trees and has put a new row in our field along the Bridport Road entry to the town. So more tree planting happening now. So it'd be interesting to see if we could compare a photo from now until maybe a hundred years time, what those trees might look like. Yeah. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Sort of yeah. future going forward in time. And I'd be really chuffed to be around to do that. That's fantastic. Interesting how th places change. Yeah. Oh, what have we got next? Ah, this is Fordington. Now this is, one of the, a postcard that was sent about 1940, but I'm pretty sure that's a much older picture. I think it was sent about 1900. Um, and if you look on the left-hand side near the top, you will see St. George's Church in Fordington, which is, um, well, I could almost see it out my living room window if I bent round a little bit uh, from where I'm sitting. Um, but that's the, the church that you see as you come into Dorchester from the east side. So if you're coming in from... Stinsford Roundabout, if you've been coming from somewhere like Blandford or Poole, or if you were going out that way, that's the church up on the hill. Um, and you'll see a lot of the houses in Fordington. Now, look in the modern picture, you can, I got it, I had to go at a slightly different spot because that old picture was taken on someone's private land. But you can sort of get the same idea. Um, there's now been a row of houses built along London Road, which blocks the view of Fordington in my modern picture so you can just see the church showing up above it and what you also see in the old picture is a lot of cows grazing on what were the water meadows the areas that were deliberately flooded at various times to make grass grow earlier and all sorts of things like that uh, and they had hay on there and i'm pretty sure that picture would have been taken around about august september because what they would do was they would have what was called the aftermath where after they'd harvested um the grass, uh, the hay crop, uh, they let cows go onto the land to, to eat all what was left behind when they cut the grass off and lots of bits of stubble behind and so forth. So the, the cows went on there and had a good old feast of everything that was left behind. 
And there, can you can anyone see a doggy in one of my pictures? In my picture there. Not in not in the old one, but in mine. Just as I was taking that picture, someone threw a a stick into the room for their dog and he's just swimming by, having carrying it out. You just see his head bobbing out of the water with his stick in his mouth. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. What have we got here? What have we got here? Well, this is a spot that you can just see hasn't really changed much at all. I'm just trying to work out when the picture was taken. I think that was taken about 1905, so say 115 years ago. And when I was doing my book, I found that old picture, and it, and I had lots of others. Went round, I got them, bought all these postcards up, fairly cheaply. Uh, went round finding the spots, and that was the last one it took me to find. It took me ages to work out where it was. And actually, when you find the spot, it's very obvious where it is. Mm. Um, if you you can you can go on a walk there from Dorchester without going too far at the moment. You go out over Blue Bridge. Uh, and a little bit further on towards Froome Whitfield. Uh, and I think you're pretty sure that that bridge is, is the same one where the lady, again, that's what photographers like to do then, and they often still do, to make a picture more interesting, they will get someone to pose in the picture to add a bit more interest, and I guess to give people a, a good idea of the size of things. Um, and that's I think you a bit more of your own, but, but it's the same old spot. Uh, yeah, now I'm going to, last ones, I'm just going to take you outside Dorset to give you good ideas of other things you can pick up. These are a pair of postcards taken near Swanage, or between Swanage and Studland at Old Harry Rocks, which some of you might have visited. And I think these postcards were taken um, not that far apart. I think the first one might, have, so that's the one up on the top left, was taken about 1920. And the one at the bottom right, maybe about 1930. It might be a bit longer than that. But if you look close up, you can see how those the chalk cliffs there that stick out towards towards uh, into the into the sea there have been eroding away, bits of lost being lost. So if you look at the bit um, that's in the center of the top left hand one, you can see two little arches um, that have been eroding away. And when you look on the one bottom right, they're bigger. So only about 10 years or so that the, uh, the the chalk has been crumbling away and those arches have got bigger. And in a moment, when we go to my picture, I couldn't get to the same spot that that was taken because it is now in midair. Um, mm -hmm. The It's not only those bits that are eroding, the actual coast, main bit of the coastline is as well. So that bit of coast that you see in there, we are, you see, that you saw on the top left of the other one um, has has pretty well gone. So I'm looking at a different angle and you a bit difficult to see, but in my picture, just to the right of center, you can still, you can see those two arches. One of them though, because I'm at a slightly different angle, you can't see very clearly, but they both got a lot bigger. So it gives you a good idea of how much erosion happens over a oh, hundred years or so. And also in my picture, uh, I managed to get Bournemouth in because when you go looking that way, you're looking northeast along the coast. So the, the the town you can just see in the background along the coast with some buildings, the block of flats and so forth, he's, he's Bournemouth. Fantastic. Lots and lots of people really enjoying the assembly. Sophie says that this is so cool. All good and, stuff. Thank uh, you. Hopkins says, wow, that is so cool as well. Um, it's been really lovely having you join us this morning, Steve. We've really appreciated you giving up your time and sharing these fantastic images with us. Thank and it'd be know. great. It, well, well, what would be fab is uh, if anyone at home's got some images, maybe um, they've been shared previously with you, or maybe you found some on the internet of uh, maybe where you live, or maybe an area that you, is special to you from the past and what it's like now. We'd love to see those. It'd be great if you could send those in, if you've got any then and now shots, as I call them. It's always nice to kind of compare. I know we've done some projects um, across school before where we've gone and visited different locations. I know some children would have gone with Mr. McBean to Abbotsbury and seen some of the um, old railway lines and seen how they've how those have changed over the years it'd be great for people to share those pictures uh, with us that'd be wonderful okay uh so steve we'll say a big thank you okay have you got the last one by the way oh, yeah. yeah oh there's another one fantastic let's see okay. oh yeah 
Leave it out. <laughs> it's all right. Sorry, I thought that was one. That's right. That's okay. <laughs> I thought Where's you were going to get rid of me now. No, definitely not. Let's have a look. This is Cern Abbas, um, the village that's famous for the Cern Abbas giant up in the middle of Dorset, or oh, about seven miles north of Dorchester. The old picture was taken about 1905. And I like to show this to people and give them a little sort of quiz of spot the difference. Now, there's some obvious differences, like the way that the road has been tarmacked since then and that there are cars in it. But um, there are some little minor details like the flagpost on the top of the church. But I think there are three big differences in those two pictures. Um, should we, Ooh. Mr. Schmacklin, ask people if they can come up, if they can see what those yeah. are? How many differences can you spot? I can spot some really interesting ones, actually. Yeah. Let's see if we can get some comments in the comments box. There are things that are the same and things that are different. It'd be good to look for those differences. Can you spot the difference? And when was that picture on the left taken? Do we know? I think about 1905. So it's a good 100 years old. Excellent. Uh, a few people spotting some really big big ones. There's some Sophie saying the car. Yep. Imogen saying the car. Can we spot any other differences? What about on, in the, the buildings? Look at the buildings. See if you can see the differences there. Uh, the buildings on the left side are different, says yes. uh, the Hoskin. I Flag on the top of the tower. Yep. A house has vanished. That's why. Yep, well oh, well done. Oh, well done. You've got that one. Yes. The... So, this on the left, one here, the one on the left-hand side, I was told there was a fire in about 1970s, 1975, I think, that destroyed that one, so it was never fully rebuilt. Um, so that's obvious. But there's another house that's gone, and that's more to the right, um, just mm. in front of the church. And that is now churchyard. So I think people knocked that down just because they wanted to make the churchyard bigger so they could bury more people in the churchyard. Mm. But that's two of them. Um, I shall give you a clue. There's another one which is really obvious when, you, when you're when you told it, but you might not notice it. Um, I'll give you a clue. I wonder if we've got much time for you to work this out. Ah, uh, I spotted that. You got it. Yeah. I'll, I think I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, whenever I try to guess, I'll, I think I'll tell you why. Sorry. Okay, let's see if we've got any more. Let's see if we've got any more comments. People saying the size and the colour of the flag house, the clock. Um, yeah, the well house done, and others not building on the building on the LHS is lower. A building on the right has been demolished. A That's house it, has yeah. vanished. The clock. Yeah, yeah they got the clock. So what? So what's going on? Because the, the clock on the right is centred, whereas the clock yep. on the left is not centred. I can only think. Well, I mean, other people guessed it as well that um, maybe because of the way the, the buildings were in 1905, it was difficult for some people to see the clock if it was in the middle, so they put it to one side. It might have just been one person who moaned a lot. I can't see the clock out from my house. Um, so I think mm -hmm. they put it over to the left so that people maybe in the square where the pictures are taken from or just back from there could, could work out what time it was because watches were expensive. you know. And now we look at uh, church clock tower um clocks on churches and I think oh they're nice aren't they fun how sweet well actually for some people that was the main way they had of telling what time it was so they were very important fantastic Steve thank you very much again uh, it's been yep. a brilliant assembly we've really enjoyed having you with us um appreciate you uh, giving the time to us today and uh we we'll have to have you back sometime soon yeah sure, maybe thank you very much everyone. Cheers. Live at four o'clock um, for today at Pow. We will see you then. Take